Hey everybody, I'm just going to do a quick video on the new release which is coming out, which is going to be 23.4.1. Um, this is a good release, it's got some cool stuff in it. Um, so, without further ado, what we'll do is we'll connect to a location. to memory editor and so just some basic quick stuff I've, I've changed the kind of layout a little bit um, this was to do with some of the memory leaks that we had I had to change some of the controls in order to make the whole thing kind of hang together I've, I've basically rewritten most of the app to be honest um, and the memory footprint is a lot better. It still uses a reasonable amount of memory but you won't see it climbing up when you're going back and forth from the same locations. Uh, so just to quickly show you what I mean by that. So if I go into um, these effects here, this is mean bank A, bank B, bank C, bank D, you can see it changes instantaneously. Not a problem. I go into another memory. Go into track effects. Go in here. Change the sequence max. Bring it down to two. Comes down. And here I can still flick through these. Still quick, still responsive. Still doing what it needs to do. So that's the, the biggest thing I think from this release is the memory leaks are they're basically sorted. There's a couple of small ones but um, I'll clean them up as we, we go along. Um, some of them are all related to Microsoft so I can't really fix them until there's a release of the .NET 8 framework which is in November. So. Okay. So that's that, that's your memory leaks all done and dusted. Uh, part of that was changing all the controls that were used. <clears throat> um, so in here now, if I was to type something, you've now got search within this um, combo box, which is good. Um, obviously you can still go back and use use this nice thing here where your recent memories are listed here and then you've got all your things in here uh, and you can just type you know either the number you know, this is everything that contains 9 or if I know what I'm actually after that one and just pick it, takes me to it which is all cool. So that's searching from within there. Uh, some other UI stuff. Um, I've oh, where will I find it? Where will I find it? Where will I find it? In here, yeah. Uh, so I've changed the kind of icon that says that it's a system level controlled icon. So you've now got this kind of Venn diagram thing instead of the asterisk. Uh, I think it's a better kind of clearer indication that these values are controlled at the system level. So that's that system level indicator there has changed. Um, let's go into audio manager. So I spoke about this before but I don't know if people kind of grasped what I was talking about. I've added wave info to each of your WAV files so once you go off and you record something or you import it I go off and I analyze the WAV file to get you some useful information on it so the track and the play level you've set, the BPM number of measures, its duration which is important if you want to look at that, uh, the location of the actual folder which you can cut and paste into your, your um, explorer if you want to do that, the actual file name the wave file, the loop length, uh, its file size, if you're interested in that, measure length, bytes per second, sample rate, channels, 
bits per sample. You know, these should always be 32, 2 and 4, 4, 100. Um, if you go off and look at that and it's something different, then you know, call me because it should convert it on import. If you imported it using this software, it doesn't auto import for most of the other um, wave formats that you could be using. So that's quite cool. Anyway, so that's wave info. That's in there. Uh, what else? What else? What else? What else? What else? Let's go back into memory editor. So sticky FX values. If I go into here and I set this to be a flanger and I set the depth to be 20, which I think, yeah, that's, that's what I want my flangers to be. And then I change my mind and say to well, I want this to be a synth control. And I start editing these synth controls here. Previously, if I then went back to the flanger, it would reload my saved values for the flanger and it would overwrite anything that I've edited within this section, or this session, sorry, without saving. So, but now, if I go back to the flanger, you'll see that my depth is still set at 20. And that's because whenever I, I change something now, uh, I record its dirty value, which sounds a bit rude. Um, and then when I reload it in, I, I basically check to see is, is there any dirty values in there that I, I need to reload. So although every time you change between these effects, I'm going off and I'm ripping out all of the effects parameters that go with it and reloading them in. I'm doing this check to see whether you've got any session changes that need to be added to that. So you can basically mess around with all of your effects and then when you save them, all of those changes will be saved even if it's not for the effect that you've currently got selected. You know, so if I was to go back to the to the flanger in here. You know, the fact that the depth is set at 33 because I was just messing with it, that would have been saved even if I didn't have the flanger selected. And that's the way the unit works. Um, and that was raised by uh, a couple of users that were saying they, they want this to be the same as the, the actual unit. So if you change an effect and you eventually save that memory location, even if it's not the effect that you've currently got chosen, those changes will be saved in the background. Um, so you can recall them later if you come back and then change the effects type. So that is sticky effects values, which is quite cool. Right, um, so what we've done, we've done the memory leaks and the fact that the app shouldn't slow down now unless you're doing crazy, crazy mad stuff. Um, we've done the wave info, we've done the sticky effects. Okay, pre-parser, this is quite cool. So, what I'm going to do is, I've got memory 10b opened here, and I'm going to basically destroy it. There you go. I've just chopped out some bits out of that memory. There you go. And then, like that. Let's save it. So, this memory is complete toast. Um, maybe your kid went in and edited it, maybe you overwrote it halfway through, maybe you I don't know, unmounted your USB halfway through, maybe the unit just wrote some dodgy AXML, which it has done, and there's been reports of that. Not my software, but the actual looper itself. Okay, so let's say you've got some dodgy XML in there. Let's see what happens when you connect to it. So I'm going to reconnect to that location. possible corrupt memory file. So this has went off, it's basically parsed the XML and it said there's something doesn't look right in this file. So it's saying memory 10b.rco, something wrong with it. So, okay. so you can go off and have a look at 10b if you want and make a decision on what you want to do with that. Do you want to restore it from a backup and all that kind of stuff? Okay, so that takes us on to your next bit. If you do want to restore it from a backup, 
So anybody who's been on the, the group will know that I've added a restore button, restore a location from backup. So if I click this, it says, okay, I'm already connected to this location. Um, so that's my target. So I can go off and say, what's my source? So I'm going to take it from my latest backup, which is in there. Now I could go off and just press restore and it would basically overwrite this location with everything from that other location. But we've got options on what we want to do. Um, I don't want the system file. I want the WAV files and I want location files. You know, so the location files are actually is your actual memory files, your memory location. So I want memory locations, I want WAV files, I don't want the system file. I don't want the looper's rhythm file, because I you know, it's the same rhythm file that I've currently got. I don't want to overwrite any um, notes that I've got on that file. Um, and when I finish, I want to connect to target. And if I leave target locations blank, it will basically run for all 99 of the locations. But I just want location 10, because that's the one that's corrupt. So if I just say restore, and it says you sure, and go, yeah, I'm sure. That's it, it's done. And it's now going to connect because I had that checkbox saying when you're finished, you know, connect to it, uh, which I am connected to. Uh, go to the memory editor, memory location 10. Yeah, that's it, it works. Um, if I was to restore everything, it would take a bit longer because it needs to go through every single WAV folder. If you think about it, you've got six WAV folders or five if you're on the 505 per memory location. You know, so it's around about 600 folders for the RC600. It's around about 500 folders for the RC505. Um, if you want to see how long that does take, then well, let's let's go in here and I'll do it. So, from there, select, and I'll just keep everything selected and we'll restore everything. And just let that churn away in the background. So, and here you can see what it's doing. This is the, the WAV files that it's going to go off and restore. So that's just going to churn through that. Um, so that's, that's basically it. What else have I added? Um, for users on the Mac who are running Mac Big Sur, um, they need a special build, or do you need a special build for Big Sur? Because it doesn't support the true kind of Mac application emulation. It needs to be in like iPad mode. Um, so I need to build a special iPad mode version of each release for Big Sur users. Um, so you'll notice that if you go to the website and you try to download the software from the, the website, there's now three buttons. It says Windows, Mac, and Big Sur. Um, what I've done with version 23.4.1 is when you go in and say check for new versions, if you're a Big Sur user, it will basically check to see whether you're running Big Sur. And if you are, it will go to a separate location for your download. So you should be able to just use it the same way everybody else uses the, the check for updates. Uh, you don't need to do anything special. Okay, so that's it completed. Um, it takes a reasonable amount of time, but then again, you know, that's how long it takes. It's, you're going through 600 WAV file folders. So that's it. It's done. Um, that's basically it for release 23.4.1. Loads of big changes. The app is a lot more responsive. You don't have those big memory leaks. Uh, you've got some cool new features with the the WAV info that you're getting. You've got the combo box search. You've got the pre-parser in there that detects XML if it's a bit dodgy. Um, I can basically enhance that going forward. So if we come up with any other situations that I need to do any checks before you launch, then I can add them to the pre-parser. Um, so we can get it a bit more robust um, for picking up things that the looper has caused 
of the software. Remember, software hasn't caused any issues with anybody's files yet. Touch wood. Um, and we've got the Big Sur version check in there. Uh, and restore from backup, which is a, a huge feature. I mean, this, this is brilliant. I love this. Um, so that's now in there. So that's it. If you don't have the software, go get it. Fantastic peeps. Right, until next time, I shall catch you again later. Thanks all. Bye bye.